boys, it is time once again to rant about Arch Linux. Just the other day, this report was made on the Arch Linux GitLab. Deactivation of DT hash breaks easy anti-cheat. Once again, we are talking about DT hash and glibc, a problem that was solved about 18 months ago up until about three days ago. And a certain Torvalds quote has never been a better fit. If it's a bug that people rely on, it's a feature. And you'll see why in just a bit. But let's have a read of the actual issue. The deactivation of DT hash breaks easy and cheat for me. Anyone who doesn't know, this is a tool that's used in multiplayer games that's supposed to stop cheaters from cheating. It often doesn't work that well because a lot of people know how to get around it, but you kind of need it to be working if you want to play these games. The commit mentions some communication from Valve. Is there some pointer where I can read up on it? So this is the commit in question. Remove DT hash patch since Valve reports that all affected games have been patched. Now, this commit is just removing the use of the patch. The actual deletion of the patch is a separate commit. I do understand that Arch cannot support this patch indefinitely, in particular, as this is only affecting a small crowd. Do you have any recommendation? Run a custom glibc with the patch included. I completely disagree with this, because one of the recommendations to fix the problem is to get somebody else to maintain the patch indefinitely. Now, the reason why I mentioned 18 months ago is this is a regression. This was first reported in August of 2022. Glibc update broke EAC for most games that use it. Now, when this first occurred, the problem was a lot more serious and affected pretty much every game that supported EAC on Linux. Things like Elden Ring, Apex Legends, Multiverses, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and a bunch of others. Pretty much everything was affected. At least in the case of Elden Ring, you could play it in offline mode and you could still play through the single player. But if you were online, it would try to connect to their servers so people could invade your world and all that sort of stuff. So it pretty much made the game mostly unplayable. As for the affected multiplayer only games, yeah, you pretty much were stuck there. Thankfully, these specific games are not affected this time. If they were, you would have heard a lot more people talking about this. This time the games are a little bit more niche, but they still do have player bases. Things like Insurgency Sandstorm, Back for Blood, and Squad. Possibly some other games that have been abandoned by the developers, but those are the ones we know about. Now, this problem is well described by a blog post written by a user called Mask Ray. This is from 2022, back when this all originally happened, but what's happening now is literally the exact same. We're just on glibc 2.38 instead of glibc 2.36. I completely disagree with his conclusion and what should be done about it, but it is a good explanation of the technicals. This glibc commit dropped a compiler option dash wl dash dash hash dash style equals both. When linking glibc provided shared objects, e.g. all of these things here. Many Linux distributions have configured their GCC to pass dash dash hash dash style equals GNU, not both, to the linker or configured GNU LD to default to dash dash hash dash style equals GNU. In the absence of dash dash hash dash style equals both, the link produces a dot gnu dot hash section and a dt gnu hashtag and suppresses dot hash and dt hash, the thing we need to be there. The glibc commit does not change how a user executable slash shared object is linked. I do not use this game software, so my reasoning about easy anti-cheat is based on others' information. Apparently easy anti-cheat does something similar to a dynamic loader, likely that it does some symbol lookup using DT hash, there is no DT GNU hash support. When the software comes to a glibc, libc.so.6 or ld linux x86 64so2 without DT hash, it reports an error. So if this DT hash is missing, it won't check DT GNU hash, it just doesn't know what to do and errors out, so you can't connect to any game lobbies. 
from the upstream perspective, DT GNU hash is intended to be a complete replacement for the older DT hash. The TLDR is it's smaller, faster, and more sensibly sorted. And very importantly, nowadays, DT GNU hash is pretty much universal among ELF operating systems. Also importantly, DT hash is a protocol between a linker and a dynamic loader. It is not intended to be consumed by a random non-standard ELF consumer. In addition, 16 years have been sufficiently long for any non-standard ELF consumer to know that DT hash has been mostly eliminated from Linux distributions. The glibc change removed one remnant of DT hash use. So for the past 16 or so years, it's effectively been deprecated. But as we've seen from prior deprecations, like in the grep case with fgrep, you can't always just deprecate something and then actually remove it. Once again, if it's a bug that people rely on, it's a feature. And at this time, it's not like we we're talking about some random user, which already by itself is probably good enough a reason to keep it around because if there's one user, there's likely others. In this case, we were talking about massive games like Elden Ring and Apex Legends. Now, at the time, Upstream glibc dropped dash wl dash dash hash dash style equals both, essentially dropping DT hash from glibc provided shared objects on many Linux distributions. Because now you couldn't just say, okay, I want them both available. Now you had to make the choice between using the old worse solution and the new better solution. At the time, Upstream just didn't think this was that big of a deal because I guess nobody in the glibc projects plays any games, which makes a lot of sense to me and as such nothing about this was announced and users found out when it got to their distro being arch linux one of the first distros to get an update like this and things were broken and people didn't even realize what the problem was until a really awesome user by the name of frogging 101 found this commit here do not use dash dash hash dash style equals both for building glibc shared objects when this was discovered Arch did something really awesome, something they don't normally do, not listen to upstream. And at the time, this commit was added. Re-add DT hash to glibc shared objects removed in 2.36. An anti-cheat tool from Epic still relies on DT hash. This is supposed to give upstream some time to adapt to DT GNU hash. Not entirely sure where they said upstream because I would generally consider EAC to be a downstream consumer, but EAC is what they're referring to here. This problem was solved until we got this commit. Remove DT hash patch since Valve reports that all affected games have been patched. Also important to keep in mind, the person who is removing it here is also the person that originally added it. Now the reason why this is not affecting Elden Ring, Apex Legends, and a bunch of other games this time is specifically because they had some time to adapt. So, in newer versions of EAC that newer games and games that are still being supported should be using, it is now making use of DT GNU hash instead. So the problem just isn't there, and assuming they don't try to get rid of that one as well, is never going to be a problem again. However, proprietary game development often doesn't work the same way as open source development. As such, sometimes things get abandoned. It seems that at least in the case of Back for Blood, the developer ended development on the game, and probably support. Most of Insurgency Sandstorm developers have been laid off, it only gets cosmetic slash microtransaction updates. Squad has a relatively good chance to get updated, but there might be other less popular games affected that may be broken forever. This problem is probably not going to get fixed and has been marked as not a bug. It very clearly is a bug. You are wrong about that. The suggestion to get around this problem is kind of hilarious. Use Flatpak Steam. If you are running online games outside of any sandboxing without Wayland, it's not exactly the best security practice in the first place. That is fair to say. The problem with the Flatpak Steam though is it has known issues that don't exist with native packaging. It has known performance problems. Also, if you want to use VR games, you literally cannot use the Flatpak Steam. 
it doesn't work in the flat pack. I really hope the Valve eventually takes over the flat pack, fixes all the problems, and just makes it the optimal way to use Steam. But at least at this stage, that's not the case. The funny part though is to suggest the flat pack Steam is to suggest that, well, Arch can't maintain the patch forever, but the flat pack can. Because that's why it works in the flat pack, because they actually have the patch there. The patch already exists, you just need to slightly modify it to make it fit in the package build. It's not this crazy endeavour that they need to write completely themselves. Along with this, there are projects like libceac. This is a project by Frogging101 and TK Glitch that is just a pre-build version of glibc that has the patch. The patch. This right here. The patch. That works. It was just deleted from the repo. It can just be re-added. Now I won't blame Arch for this, but there are users suggesting a different fix. So, as I said, this is a repo that contains a modified version of glibc. There is also an AUR package called glibc eac. This is going to replace the version of glibc on your system with a modified version of glibc. This will deal with the problem. However, before you install something like this from the AUR, be very, very careful, okay? Because if you break glibc, you are going to be in a lot of trouble and you are going to need an Arch ISO to repair it. If you don't know what you're doing, honestly, the flat pack isn't the worst suggestion. At the end of the day, it won't break your system if something goes wrong. Or if you're looking to try out a new distro, something like Nabara is always going to have the patch. Or if you want to, you could try out Gentoo, which I feel like has possibly the best solution. So by default, when they build glibc, you don't have the patch enabled. But there is a one-line toggle to enable the patch if you need it. That I think is great. So from now on, we have two packages in Arch that are knowingly shipped broken. The first one being OBS with its missing WebSocket functionality because they don't want to pull in the Git code, they want to use a tarball, and the missing browser functionality because they don't want to add a proper working dependency. And also, now glibc with once again missing DT hash. I really wish this idea that games aren't this massive driving force for Linux adoption just went away. Gaming is absolutely massive and is growing on Linux. It is time to accept that. As I said earlier, and I said throughout the video, if it's a bug that people rely on, it's a feature. This commit and the commit that removed the patch should be reverted. So hopefully that gets done. Now, I don't play these particular games. It doesn't affect me personally. I'm a big Monster Hunter World player and Path of Exile. But I understand that users who are affected by this are going to be annoyed. And they have every right to be annoyed, and they should be annoyed. But let me know your thoughts down below. What distro do you use? Do you use Arch? Do you use Gentoo? Are you an Ubuntu, Pop OS? What do you use? Let me know down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video, and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs, leave pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and honestly, honestly, sometimes it's hard to be an Arch supporter.